Assalamu alaikum. We begin with Allah's name, the most gracious, the most merciful. May Allah's blessings and peace be upon His beloved Prophet For centuries now, Muslims have been researching and studying the Prophet's biography without a proper visual aid. And by this I mean something that shows the topography, i.e. the features and layout of the city as it was during that age. Now, after nearly a decade of working on the Prophet's biography, والسلام, I am honored to present to you Mecca at the dawn of Islam. I pray that it becomes of great benefit to educators and researchers, both Muslims and non-Muslims, interested in this time period. Mecca at the dawn of Islam is the Mecca where the Blessed Prophet Muhammad grew up. It is the Mecca where the first revelations of the Quran were revealed. The holy city's borders are beyond just the town around the Kaaba, but rather also holds within them Mount Arafat, Mount Hira, and Mount Thor. For a decade, the early Muslims were oppressed, persecuted, tortured, and boycotted for nothing more except their faith, for testifying that there is no God except Allah and the Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. To the east of the city, we see the location of Mount Arafat, with Ghar Thor, or Cave Thor, to its west, just north of the city, and to the east and northeast, we see where Mina is, and above it, the Cave of Hira. The Kaaba covers, called the Kiswa, at the time were various high quality fabrics of different colors draped over its walls. The Zemzem well water is raised here for illustration but is usually far lower and deeper in the well. They also had constructed two basins which they filled with water next to the well. The one closest to the Kaaba was used for drinking and the one furthest from the Kaaba, next to the well, was used for washing. The southern half of Mecca had the homes of the two most prominent companions of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq the first of the rightly guided caliphs whom even prior to Islam was the Prophet's closest companion. To his west at the base of Mount Umar was the home of al-Khattab where the great Umar ibn al-Khattab the second of the rightly guided caliphs was born and raised. Moving north towards the heart of Mecca, we have the two Ajiyad valleys to our east and the Kaaba centered in the valley of Mecca. To the west of the Kaaba, we have Dar al-Nadwa, 
which was their House of Congress, where all major decisions were made in a meeting that would include all the top noblemen of Quraysh. To the south of the Kaaba, we see the home of Umm Hana, radiallahu anha, which was where the Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, was awakened and taken on a miraculous journey of Al-Isra and Mi'raj. To her east are the homes of Abdullah ibn Jal'an, where the Fudul Pact had taken place when the Prophet Muhammad was 15 years old. And further into the Ajiyad Wadi, we see the home of Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt, one of the Prophet's severest enemies. Further to his east is the home of Abi Al-As and his wife Zainab radiallahu anha, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. In the opposite valley to their north is the home of the wickedly evil Abu Jahl. Slightly to their north, we see the famous house of Al-Arqam at the base of the Safa Hill, which served as the Muslim secret university where they can learn Islam and the Quran without being tortured. To the north of the Kaaba and the Zamzam well, we see the famous Bani Shayba gate, which is the northern main gate into the Kaaba area. Moving further north, we see the Bani Hashim Valley appear to the right, but before that we have the second and more famous home of Al-Abbas which lay on the path between the Safa and Marwa and currently its location is to the right of those going from the Safa to the Marwa when performing Sa'i at the first green light where men start to jog or run. Further north we see the location of Khadija wife of the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, in a prominent neighborhood. In the same block at the base of the Marwa hill and facing the path we see the home of Abu Sufyan Just north of him and also at the Marwa hill we see the home of the oppressive and corrupt Utba bin Rabi'a, one of the worst neighbors one could imagine. And the closest to the home of Khadija was the house of Ma'tib bin Abi Lahab, who unlike his evil father, eventually did embrace Islam. Then to their east, at the entrance to the Bani Hashim Valley, we see the house of Abdullah, the Prophet's father, and where he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was born. Further into the mouth of the valley, we see the home of his protective uncle, Abu Talib, and at the base of the mountain, is the home of his evil uncle, Abu Lahab. Moving further north, we approach the entrance to the Bani Amr Valley, and at the base of the mountain, just south of its entrance, lay the properties of Al As bin Sa'id, father of Sa'id bin Al As, radiallahu an. Leaving the Bani Amr Valley to our east and facing directly north, we see what I call the Red District, which is an area where adultery tents with red flags on them were located and generally a rather sinful place. Then to the east we have the Sheep Market just outside the mouth of the Bani Amr Valley. And in the distance ahead is the graveyard and it is in this graveyard near the base of the mountain where Khadija radiallahu anha was buried. From this beautiful informative view we can see the key mountains of Mecca. What is important to highlight is that North points to the right of the screen in this view and south is to the left. Straight ahead and up from this viewpoint are the western mountains. It is relevant to note that Mount Hind, Mount Delma and Mount La'la are all parts of Mount Qa'i'qa'an and are commonly simply referred to as Mount Qa'i'qa'an. Likewise, it's clear 
from this view that the Safa hill is actually at the base of Mount Abu Qubais which is the famous mountain where Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first declared publicly his call to Islam while standing on top of it and facing the city and the Kaaba. This next group of labels shows the other key locations such as some of these famous wells, markets and main routes in and out of Mecca. Of relevance to highlight is that it is the northern route to the right of the screen which forks into two routes, one of which curves eastward then back south like a U-turn behind the mountains below and leads to Mount Arafat. If one does not follow this eastern curve south, then they end up face to face with Mount Hira. This final group of labels from this view shows the main neighborhood based on tribal distribution. While some clans were more dispersed, here are the main areas that belong to some of the main branches of the tribe Quraysh. Both Ajad valleys belonged almost completely to the formidable Bani Makhzum branch and to their north is the Bani Hashim stronghold where the Muslims were boycotted. It is there that they were trapped and remained on high security alert for three intensely oppressive and difficult years. There they endured severe hunger and isolation until the boycott ended. Bani Uday had initially lived in the area between the Safa Hill and the Kaaba, but after several clashes with other clans, they became allied with the formidable Bani Saham clan and relocated with most going to the area at the base of Mount Umar and a few at the base of the mountain in the Hajun Valley, which leads westwards towards the Fatima Valley. From Khadija's home, the Prophet in his final years before prophethood would exit the northern path of Mecca and head to the cave of Hira, which was rather difficult to reach and located at the top of Mount Hira. It is there on that destined blessed night in the holy month of Ramadan that the first verses of the Quran were revealed. There high on top of Mount Hira, the ayat descended. After Muhammad's prophethood والسلام, he was met with severe resistance. Then after 10 years of severe oppression, persecution and torture, Allah gave permission for migration to Medina. Meanwhile Quraysh plotted to kill the prophet Muhammad والسلام, and chose a group of nobles from amongst them to perform this evil act. As the great and courageous Ali bin Abi Talib slept in the Prophet's bed as a deception. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made his way to the home of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu who had already prepared everything for the journey. From Abu Bakr's home, the Prophet and Abu Bakr moved south out of Mecca towards the cave of Thor. When Quraysh became aware that their target was no longer in the city, they sent urgent search parties throughout the land and placed a large ransom for anyone who would find and kill the Blessed Prophet ﷺ. For three nights, Allah's Messenger وسلم, and Abu Bakr عنه, hid in Ghar Thor, after which they took the long and dangerous journey to Medina. It was only after this migration that the call to prayer was established publicly and Islam grew strong 
and eventually liberated Mecca. Mecca which remains the holiest city in Islam and pilgrims till this day perform Hajj every year and praise Allah night and day. Oh. Mm-hmm.